Good morning, everybody, and uh, this is your SP day trade setups for today. So, starting off on the 8 hour, actual fact, let's just quickly look at the weekly. So, we basically were going parabolic on the weekly. You can see how uh, it was a gentle curve, and uh, you know, hindsight's always a perfect science, but if you draw a line there, and I always say, pay attention to your first two fractals. And uh, there they are there. And you can see we dropped below it. And we came all the way up here to test them again. So it typically always plays out. But anyway, uh, if we do that, you'll see there is our trend line. And then we're sort of going parabolic from it. So just creating a, a curve to the upside. Uh, we close this gap. This weekly gap is now officially closed on the weekly anyway. I think it's closed on most time frames. There is another one up here, and there's another little, well, there's two in fact, further up. Now, I would be, I've been expecting a pullback, and we need some kind of a pullback onto structure. So let us just get that structure in before we start looking. So there's our weekly swing high. That's one of them. And then I would put that one in as well, which is kind of where we found support previously. So that's the channel we should be looking at. Look at the oscillators at the moment of the weekly, extremely overbought. So I wouldn't uh, be jumping in long on the long term view. But um, nevertheless, if you start drilling down through the shorter time frames, you start seeing a different picture. And uh, the first one is look at the oscillators. They've separated. One of them is below the 20 and the other stochastic is on the way down. And uh, you can see a bit of a wedge forming here. We still have to get down to structure. So this is, I just want to swing left on the eight hour just to fine tune it and then we can lock it in. Right, there it is. Okay, so we haven't quite tested this. So this to me is still something we need to be paying attention to. And I'm just gonna put that level in there. You can see there's a swing low there, just to, just for the lower time frames. Okay, so three are quite simple oscillators all over the place, but we do have diversions here. You can see between that swing low and this swing low, um, oscillators are higher, prices lower, that is bullish diversions. So you need to pay attention to, to that. Let's see what's going to happen. You can see how relevant this level is here. This 43.72. We are bouncing around on it. And at the moment, we have a bit of a gap up. For me, to be quite honest, there is a wedge here. And uh, that's the first two there. You can see we sort of faked up above it. We're back and testing it here. So that is the, the trend line. So the minute you start getting down to lower time frames, you will see uh, what you need to do. Okay, so before we get to that, don't forget to give us a thumbs up there, drop us a comment, just say hi in, in the, uh, the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. We do this every single morning. Now, looking at the eighth hour, you can see we do have the crossover, which happened on uh, Friday. A bit messy though, because every time we came down, the buyers came in and then they pushed it down and then buyers came in. So really messy. Uh, it just basically means that there's still confusion and we're trying to swing it. So the bulls are trying to swing it, the bears are trying to get control, but nobody's really getting control. This top of the wedge or top of the trend line is critical to pay attention to. And you can see here's the gap here. I suspect we are going to reject this area, to be honest. I think um, typical Monday, there's nothing much that's going to be moving the markets. So I'm just adding this level in here. You can see the relevance of that. If I swing left, you can see the buyers have come in off that before. So we are testing it at the moment. And that is uh, 4365. So I do expect this gap to close today. Uh, there's two gaps here. You just drop down the 15 minutes and you'll see it clear as mud. Um, well, not so much 50 minute, but you see, oh, well, there it is there. So there's the, the little gap on the 15, and here's the big weekly gap. So uh, that, I suspect, is going to close. We are still hovering below the 155 EMA on the weekly. Now, if you just go back to Thursday, you can see how chaotic it was. 
crossed over of all the moving averages and then immediately crossed over all the way to the downside again. So probably more of the same, but I think the overall trend is still going to be down. Uh, we do have this level that I would expect us to be targeting at the moment. That's 43.28. So in a nutshell, what we're looking for is a rejection. And it could be in this zone here. Just look left. You can see there's lots of tails that could offer resistance. You've got a diagonal trend line here. There's a whole lot going on here. So that's the area for short. If you get above uh, 43.72 and you come back and test that area, then it's no longer short. Then you're looking for longs to the upside. But I suspect first we close this gap. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. Some kind of a, a rejection in this zone at market open for a move down to close these gaps. So let's just put that level in. Um, it'll probably be in this area, but I'm going to be a little bit conservative here. Uh, even more conservative. So I'm just going to take this uh, close and open of these bars here. And you can see there's a couple of bars that are played in that area, plus the gaps right there. So 43.50, no wonder. So uh, 43.52, I think, would be my target. So just move it slightly up. That's 43.51 and a half. That's enough. So looking for rejection here. Stop right above the price action, and then you're looking to target this area. If you start dropping below the lows of Friday, wait for the retest of it, and then you're looking at 43.28. Um, so that's kind of my setup for today. Hope it helps and uh, we will catch up with you tomorrow morning. Cheers for now.